Oh, it's Scott Manley here with another part of my tutorial series. We are coming towards Minmus there. You see this? This little uh, sort of turquoise colored planet. Well, we need to get ourselves into orbit, so we need to slow down. So I'm going to add a maneuver node here on this yellow section of the orbit. Now notice that the maneuver vectors are completely at odds with the current positioning of the orbit. The reason being that the hyperbola is actually transferred to a different sphere of influence, which so is all confusing. Anyway, look, it's the same as before. You do the retrograde vector to slow down, and in this case, I've slowed down too much, so I need to apply a bit of prograde vector. And there, get ourselves into orbit. You probably want at least, you know, 10, 15 kilometers above the surface again, just to be sure. So we know where a maneuver is, we know when it's going to happen, we just need to time accelerate to it. So there, let's cross into the sphere of influence, watch the nav ball for the switch, it'll flick, there, bingo, now we're now falling towards Minmus instead of away from Kerbin. So watching the time go down, I've currently decided not to trust warp to here when I'm on a hyperbolic trajectory since that seems to have been the thing that randomly causes my problems. Okay, so we're just Gonna use the manual time acceleration, get it down to under a minute, and that's us close enough. So turn all the way around. Note the blue arrow in the nav ball pointing us towards where the maneuver node is. We know where the maneuver node is, it's on the retrograde vector, it doesn't really... I mean, you'll find in many cases that maneuvers you want to make are along these prograde or retrograde vectors, or the normal and anti-normal for, uh, for adjusting your inclination. Of course, if you can combine multiple maneuvers into one, then you will find that you don't need to have a, you don't need to use as much delta v, and you don't you won't be firing along these things. So switch to map mode. I'm going to watch this come down, and cut power when we reach the correct altitude. Throttle down as well, because of course you don't want to have to make any corrections there. Nine, eight, seventy, sixty, fifty, forty. 30, dear 22, that's good enough. Let's stop that here. So now we're going to fall towards Minmus. Easy enough here, it's going to take four hours to move in. And of course the next step with landing will be to add a maneuver node at the closest point. And you just do standard retrograde, prograde vectors to get yourself a circular orbit. And in preparation for that maneuver in a few hours time, we'll just align ourselves with the, the vector. And the eagle-eyed viewers out there will note that the retrograde vector at the opposite side of the orbit is the same as the prograde vector at this side of the orbit. What a surprise. That, actually for an elliptical orbit, that's only true at periapse and apoapse. Actually, I've realized that I need to align my solar panels to make sure my batteries are recharging. And there's another thing we need to do while we're up here. We need to start doing science, because we're in high altitude space above Minmus. So, uh, first thing we should do is collect a crew report. And you see, looking at the surface of Minmus reminds you of a favorite childhood dessert. Great. So he's a scientist, so there's a few things he can do. I'm just going to do the things slightly differently. First of all, he's going to... You know, turn on his lights there using the L key. Collect EVA science. And uh, of course, I'm going to take the experiments and store the experiments to just clear out the crew report in there. Now, pressing R and using the power of the built in RCS pack, we're going to have to fly around and collect the science from the experiments. Actually, we're going to run the experiments. This is a feature that scientists are capable of doing. So they can actually just stand next to an experiment and perform the experiment. Of course, you then keep it, right click to collect the data, right, remove that, and then restore it. Now, these experiments normally can't be used more than one. The materials bay and the, uh, the goo experiment can only be used once unless you're a scientist, in which case the scientist can go on EVA and fix it. You know, they clean it out, make it look, you know, like new again, and then sell it on to some other scientist that needs to collect the same data. The mystery goose to collect the data and then restore the experiment to new so we can do it again. You see, we're saving this, right? We can do this in multiple locations. It's, now, the barometer doesn't matter. Anyone can use and reuse that experiment as many times as they like. So that's less of a problem. But, you know, the real the real science rewards come from the mystery goo experiment and, and actually EVA reports and surface samples. Surface samples are probably, I think, the highest scoring of any of the 
uh, science options available to you because it requires a Kerbal and it requires a Kerbal on EVA. Okay, log temperature and we've done that. So now we of course return to the capsule. Again, doing this very carefully. You know, it's a good idea by the way to save before you exit the capsule because sometimes people find themselves spinning away out of control and then they wish they'd quick saved before departing. Anyway, the next item on the mission checklist is to get ourselves into a lower orbit. We know where the maneuver node is, so we're just going to use warp to maneuver to perform that. Once there, we will perform uh, an orbital circularization maneuver, which we've already planned out. 47 meters per second is what we're going to need, and it's going to slow us down, put us into a nice circular orbit, where we can then be close enough to the surface to actually look for those different landing sites. But before that, let's uh, spend our minute collecting the science data. We don't need, we're not going to go on EVA just yet. We're just going to do this while we're waiting for the science, for the, for the maneuver node to come up. So notice all of these are from space near Minmus, right? Now we're low enough that if we had appropriate experiments, they would actually start returning science from the biome in question. So you would have multiple fields low down. I probably should do a video explaining what experiments work in which altitude ranges and provide which kinds of data because it's actually not the most trivial thing to, to sort out. Anyway, a trivial thing to sort out because I've got it planned is the circularization maneuver. And throttle up. We're just gonna run this at low thrust. We don't need to we don't need to blitz through this maneuver super quick. As I said, real rockets tend to only throttle at hundred percent and zero percent. Most uh, rocket engines have no ability to adjust their throttle. Space Shuttle main engines could do it, the Apollo landing engine, and of course the Merlin engine on the Dragonfly. Those are three very high profile examples of rockets that can actually adjust their throttle rate. Anyway, time to collect the science. So once again, you perform another one of these EVAs. So now that we're close, EVA does actually give you the biome. So this is the Mooner, or sorry, the Minmus Minlands, Midlands. So in theory, he can stay on EVA and collect science from all the different biomes that you fly over. And at this latitude, I think you can actually pass over every single biome on Minmus except for the poles. Uh, but of course, in the meantime, we're just going to check the, the science from these locations, restore the experiments to their former glory, remove the data. You'll get a warning box. The warning does, it basically says if you remove this, you can't reuse the experiment, right? Except that you can reuse the experiment if you happen to be a scientist. So the scientist is smart enough to just click through the warning and say, I know what I'm doing here. So let's take the pressure data. We've already collected it. And let's collect that data and remove it. So this is all good stuff. This will help us in our career, in our you know plan to build bigger, better and more awesomer rockets for exploration of the Kerbin system. And lastly, we have the little thermometer here. Can we get in close enough? This this is where it can be very complicated. Uh, you know, there's a certain light touch that's needed when you're flying around on EVA. Uh, everything's in zero G, you don't stop moving. You have to be very, just very slight, very light with the controls, right? That's all I'm saying. I don't really have any, uh, <laughs> any magic bullet that will fix your fix your problems if you're having them. Okay, with that out of the way, we are go for landing, but we need to wait for an appropriate landing site. And since time acceleration in low orbit is lousy, I'm gonna go back to the Space Center. There's another reason for going back to the Space Center as well. The Space Center, sometimes you'll find new contracts will appear. Uh, it's worth checking because you might have like a land on Minmus contract or something. Uh, so yeah, always go back when you've performed a major maneuver because you don't know what might have changed in the meantime. You might have some free and easy contract. Anyway, the tracking station, you can go and focus on the Black Watch and you can perform time acceleration here and you're not limited. So normally time acceleration at this altitude is limited to 50 times regular speed and that would take a long time to go around. But here I'm running it at a thousand times. What I'm waiting for is that large flat area to come around and be in the right position. I think I'm going to wait a little longer so I have more of an area to land on here. 
So now we're in position, I'm now going to fly the, fly the spacecraft again. You see, it's a fast way of performing time acceleration rather than sitting and waiting at 50 times regular speed. As much as, you know, it is really quite uh, calming to orbit the planet and what, or orbit the moon and watch it sliding silently below you. But I am going to do this. I'm going to move around to the far side. And you can see that the, the moon rotates. Minmus is not tidally locked to Kerbin. The moon is. The moon always keeps one side facing towards Kerbin. Minmus doesn't, so uh, you'll find that it changes a lot more quickly than the moon. Like, if you're orbiting the moon waiting for a specific landing site, you literally have to wait for the moon to move all the way around Kerbin. Okay, so I'm stopping about 90 degrees away from where I'm hoping to land. The terrain on Minmus doesn't really lend itself to an incredibly efficient approach trajectory. You're essentially having to drop down into a deep valley, so you can't kind of just go horizontally and then, uh, you know, fall onto the surface gently. You have to go pretty much in a, a steep descent trajectory and then kill your velocity near the surface. So I'm just going to do that, putting the putting the point of impact slightly beyond the valley. You see, I haven't changed my velocity much, only about you know, 10 meters per second or thereabouts. But that'll be enough. Landing gear is deployed. Now you should be careful here, if your initial orbit was too close to the surface, you might find that you have a chance of hitting one of these hills before you come over the valleys. That's something to be aware of. If you're heading towards a mountain, be sure to you know, fire your engines up to arrest your vertical speed and stop yourself descending into chaos. But here we're fine, we're just going to point ourselves retrograde and we're going to start to think about landing this thing. Of course, it's just a case of slowing our velocity to zero as we reach the surface. And at least with Minmus, these flat areas, the the zero point in the landscape, the landscape altitude is the same as sea level. So you're not going to have any case where the... So basically the altitude gauge at the top of the screen will be entirely correct. Okay, I've reduced my velocity to just under 100 meters per second. We'll pick a little more of that up, but we're just kind of slowing ourselves down to put ourselves in the middle of this flat plane. Now you can estimate when you're going to land by using maneuver nodes. What you do is you put a node right at the intersection. It tells you 1 minute and 22 seconds. You can also use this to figure out how long it would take to burn. So there at 100 meters per second, it's going to be a 7 second burn here. Now, if you try, you could try that maneuver. Uh, however, I would suggest you don't do it because that is what's called a suicide burn and you will probably end up crashing into the surface. Uh, yeah, just instead use it as an estimate. Figure out that you have, you know, 1 minute 22 seconds and it's going to take you about 7 seconds to slow down. So I think in this orbit, we're aiming to slow down at about 500 meters. If you're un at all unsure, just keep slowing yourselves down, bringing your, your velocity down lower and lower. So this is at 116 meters per second. Let's uh, just slow our velocity down. So that we're, uh, there, there's, the, there's the shadow. There, now our speed is about 25 meters per second. We're still moving towards the surface, but we're moving a lot more slowly now. And we know that we can kill our velocity very, very quickly here. Bring the throttle up just a bit. You just gotta keep pointing at that retrograde vector. That is the place you wanna be pointing. If you are pointing anywhere other than the retrograde vector, then you are not being efficient or correct in slowing your speed, and you might even be increasing your speed depending upon how these things are happening. So again, just keeping it pointed there, and we're slow enough that I can just cut the engines. There, bingo, you see? The gravity on Minmus is very low and very amenable to landing. So again, just the case, you want to make sure you slow down enough before arriving at the surface. So anyway, first order of business is to collect all the science. According to the science reports, we have landed in a location called the Greater Flats. There are lesser flats, there are flats, and there's a whole bunch of different flatlands. There are also slopes, lowlands, midlands, and highlands, and poles. So you collect all the science here, and these science reports are all specific to these locations. Uh, of course, Bob now gets to go on EVA and do a little more science. 
Bob gets to do his dramatic uh, one small step for a Kerbal. Oh, actually, no, he gets to fall comically onto the surface and bounce around. That's one small fall for a Kerbal, one giant plummet for a Kerbal kind. Okay, <laughs> didn't expect that to happen. You'll notice the gravity in Minmus is quite, quite low and you can jump a long, long way in the air. High enough that we can collect a, an EVA report from the from well, the air, basically, the space above it. Now, we have already also unlocked surface samples by upgrading our uh, science facility. So now we can sneak a taste of the surface sample. Nope, it isn't dessert. We should also commemorate this momentous event with a flag that uh, commemorates our space program and leave a message for future generations. For science! And now comes a more difficult version of the maneuvers we were doing in Zero-G. So, first of all, we're going to return the science we have already collected to the capsule here. So let's fly up. Oh, and come on, get in. And, oh, and he collided with it too hard. And so he ragdolls and falls back to the surface. Yes, he's a scientist. He's not a pilot. <laughs> That's his excuse. Okay, let's store the experiments there. Great, now... Now he can tr collect the EVA data from the ground. You see, he can only collect one piece of EVA data at a time, right? So he has one for the air, or one for the space, and one for the ground. Now he's going to try and collect the data from this, and this requires a lot of coordination because you need to use, move the mouse at the same time uh, and uh, collect the data. Now, let's see if we can get around. It's going to store that there. Come on. Ever so gentle. You could actually maybe stand on top of these things. Nope, he's falling off. <laughs> this may not be possible for... If you're having serious trouble doing this in on the surface of Minmus, it's okay to, you know, just say to, to quit and decide that you want to do it back in space. So collect the data, remove and restore. Okay, that's actually working pretty well. Watch your EVA propellant. If it starts getting low, remember that you're going to have to get back inside the capsule. And while it's possible to take a leap and land on the capsule, it's one of these things that will have you being very frustrated because this is hardly a platform game and it's not really designed for these kind of precision leaps. Okay, RCS back on and get ourselves into the capsule. Okay, and while I do this, I think it's uh, another good place to end this. We'll be back in one more episode. Until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.